Have you ever heard about a mystery stone? You want to know why you haven't? Because it was a mystery. Hi, and welcome to Sea Life TV. I'm Daryl Chesser. Today, I want to talk to you about the mystery stone. Yes, the mystery stone. This is a writing I did a few years back that I'm going to read from, and we're going to talk about the mystery stone. Let's get started. Daniel, a captive of the Babylonians. You've all known and heard of Daniel. He was exiled from his land and was placed by God in a great place of influence in the most powerful nation. The head of gold is he would interpret a dream for Nebuchadnezzar later, like the pinnacle of human kingdoms, Nebuchadnezzar. Let's read about it in uh, Daniel chapter 2, verses 31 through 36. This was verified by the revelation and the interpretation of the king's dream. So here it is in Daniel 20, uh, 2, 31 through 36, and uh, then we'll go 44 and 45. I'm, I'm reading out of I believe this is uh, GW or God's Word version right now, but you can follow along in whatever version. Daniel 2, 31 through 36. Your majesty, you had a vision. You saw a large statue. The statue was very bright. It stood in front of you and it looked terrifying. He's talking to Nebuchadnezzar, interpreting the dreams that none of the, uh, the mystics and the sorcerers and the chemists, none of the guys and the uh, court jesters, None of them could uh, solve. And God gave Daniel this revelation. And he goes on. The head of this statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and arms were made of silver. Its stomach and hips were made of bronze. It leg, its legs were made of iron. Its feet were made partly of iron and partly of clay. This is the dream that Nebuchadnezzar saw. And God has just revealed what the dream was and now to Daniel. And now he's going to reveal to Daniel also the interpretation of what that statue that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about is. Here it goes. It says, while you were watching, he's still setting up the dream. He's still telling him the dream. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. He's still telling the rest of this dream. Here's this statue. And then he says to Nebuchadnezzar, while you were watching in your dream, a, sta a stone was cut out, but not by human hands. And it was cut out from the mountains, but not by human hands. It struck the statue's iron and clay feet and smashed them. Wow. Then all at once, the iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold were smashed. They became like husks on a threshing floor in summer. The wind carried them away. Not a trace of them could be found. But the stone, the rock, the mystery stone that struck the statue became a large mountain which filled the whole world. This is the dream. Gold equals Babylonians. Silver is the Chaldeans and, and Medes. The silver, I mean, the, the bronze is the Greeks. You know, you've heard of the Bronze Age and Alexander the Great. That uh, was that. And iron, Rome, the Romans. And as it began to get into its later ages, it began to be, as the feet says here, iron mixed with clay. So here's the iron of Rome. And now, you know, uh, democracy and republics and other things start to, start to, you know, that are the human weakness of clay, of earth, of dirt. Here's the iron of tyranny and the iron of absolute. But now it's beginning to be mixed with the earth of, of human representation and elected and representatives. And it, it's, a, it's an earthy thing, right? Mixed with this iron. So here's what the meaning is. God gives Daniel the meaning. He's telling Nebuchadnezzar this. Now we'll tell you its meaning. At the time of those kings where the feet are iron and clay, mixed with clay. At the time of that, those kings, which is Rome, 
This is the way I see it, and I'm sure many others. Well, yeah, we know it is. Rome and the democratic governments and representative governments starting to spring up. In other words, weakness in the tyranny and the absolute monarchs. It says, the God of heaven in that time will establish a kingdom that will never be destroyed. No other people will be allowed to rule it. Whew. The ru the ruler then uh, would have to be eternal. Yeah, you get it. You're, you're starting to get it. Jesus Christ, no other ruler can rule it. It's got to be an eternal ruler. It's got to be someone that lives forever. This is... That was during the time of Rome. Now, when was Jesus born? Right in the middle, towards the middle end of the down, the downside of the Roman Empire, head, heading down. From that point on, it just diminished. <clears throat> the feet, partly of clay, partly of, of iron. Right there, when this prophecy, hundreds of, or a thousand, a year, a thousand years earlier, maybe, well, hundreds of years earlier at the very least, before Christ was even born, God is telling this king, Nebuchadnezzar, through a dream by, by Daniel, what is exactly going to happen. Now, let's see you guys do that. Uh, wizards, uh, astrologers, you know, Satan, all of you prognosticators, all you wise guys, tell us, tell us you can say what's going to happen before it happens. Okay, now let's go on. Wow. This uh, kingdom that will never end and no one else will be allowed to rule it. It will smash all the other kingdoms and put an end to them. But it, this kingdom, this church, this kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ will be established forever. Dude, this has been out there, like I say, for a thousand years. Well, now 3,000 years. This has been out there, well, however long it was since, let's just say, 2,500 years. This has already been out there 2,500 years. 500 years before Christ and now 2,000 since the Christ and the cross. And you've seen, I mean, just kingdoms topple and rise and topple and rise and topple and getting weaker and weaker. And, and tyranny being rejected. Even the great Soviet empire and communism rejected. And still trying to make a comeback, but it can't because it's stupid. It just asks it's just stupid. All right. And here we go on with what Daniel's reading or, or prophesying. This is the stone that you saw cut out from the mountain, but not by human hands. It smashed the iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold. The great God has told you what will happen in the future, Nebuchadnezzar. Your majesty, Daniel says, your dream is true, and you can trust that this is its meaning. Wow. Do you realize... That all of history was laid out before this king, Nebuchadnezzar, a, a secular king. But if we're to believe the dream, which I do, and the interpretation that Nebuchadnezzar, this Babylonian empire at that time under Nebuchadnezzar, was the gold head. That means almost divine. I mean, his, his, his rule in, in absolute terms, even it says even animals and some of nature obeyed him. I mean, he was the pinnacle of human kingdoms. That's, that's my reading. Now, some others may disagree with me completely, but I, I tend to see this. This is, all right, here's the top of the heap of the heap, the top. And this guy, by the end of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar, even acknowledges God as the king of kings and the, and the, the God of all creation and that everyone should worship him. And that's this head of gold. Then when he's uh, dead and his son, I think Belshazzar, uh, is... That's a whole nother story, but he gets thrown over and it's the Chaldeans, the Medes, they come in. Now we move into this silver, which is okay, good, but it's not divine, right? It's silver. It's so we see it going downhill. Then Alexander the Great, man, boom. Now it is bronze. So we've gotten way down. And then finally to the Rome. And this Rome is like new and it's Republic and it's amazing. It rises out of the ashes of Greece and some of the other places <clears throat> and becomes, you know, huge and basically going to be around forever. But it's it, the rest of its existence is iron and clay. It can't, it can't, it can't do it. We see a lot of the church 
uh, like a lot of the Catholic Church back in the day at points. I'm not denigrating them. I'm just saying we all make the mistake. If you, uh, if you begin to walk away from Jesus Christ alone and you start to get into everything else and try to be all to all and corrupt people come in and stuff happens. Well, here's Roman Catholic Church. So you still got some of that Roman top-down top down stuff. I mean, they're telling kings what to do. Seriously, that's not our place now. It, it, it will be maybe at some point, but that's not our place. That was God's place, not a man. It was not for the church to be telling the state what to do. Our kingdom's not of this world right now. Our power is in God and in faith and in his Holy Spirit. That's, that's our power. Our power is invisible. Every nation, every tribe, tongue, uh, language, that's our strength. It is not in the numbers of assembly. It's not in the nations of, it is in trust and prayer in God. That's my opinion. That's the way I read the scriptures. Anyway, I see it. So Rome still has a little bit of this iron, but it's mixed with clay. Here's the humans that are crying out for Jesus Christ. And, and they keep the Bible, and there's a lot of veneration, and I'm sure there's some sincerity, but then there's still this Roman thing, the Roman popes and the Roman influence that, well, their, their military might is gone, but now they can exercise it a different way through the church. Do you know that's dangerous? That's even dangerous right now with political movements and evangelicals and Christians. We're to be fully involved in our society, in our republic. We are to vote and know the issues and vote according to our conscience and our faith. Let it all influence, you know, uh, inform the way we vote. Ask God. But at the end of the day, if you believe our power to change this nation is in voting as a block, I had news for you. The guys we vote for can be just as corrupt as anyone else. They're good liars. Politicians are really good at just lying. I, I know that's shocking, isn't it? Most of you, that's news. <laughs> no one. It's news to no one. No, everybody knows that. Okay, so here's where we are. We're still right there. And Jesus Christ, that kingdom comes right then. Jesus is born in the middle of that at the right time and the right place in the right to the right people. And just amazing. This kingdom, the rock has been hewn and comes and starts to break this king, break the world's kingdoms apart. And they've never recovered the, the world kingdoms. Now let's go on. Uh, do you know why the kingdoms exalt themselves and lie and kill and persecute the kingdom of God everywhere they find it? Well, because the dark rulers have read Daniel's prophecy or Daniel's uh, uh, interpretation in this prophetic book and knows what is coming for them. And it has already been in the earth for 2,000 years. They couldn't stop it from coming, number one. And they couldn't stop it from staying. Persecute it, persecute it. It just, it's like roaches, man. They keep, grow, they keep popping up everywhere. The kingdom. We are so close to seeing what Daniel prophesied thousands of years ago. The stone became a mountain and crushed everything and filled the whole earth. For 2,000 years, it's been getting bigger and bigger, and bigger, and bigger, and bigger, and bigger, and bigger. And it's going to, it's beginning to fill the whole earth. And it terrifies the darkness. The cross Jesus Christ crucified and resurrected was the absolute nail, the center point of all eternity, the final gavel on this world's dark ruler, Satan, and all of his angels. The adversary, the serpent, the old dragon, has been judged. Jesus himself said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Praise God. Let me close with a, what the darkness realized soon after the resurrections. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 10. And here we go. However, we do use wisdom to speak to those who are mature. It is a wisdom that doesn't belong to this world or to the rulers of this world who are in power today and gone tomorrow. We speak about the mystery of God's wisdom, the mystery stone, this mystery that was hidden right out in plain sight. It was all through God's word. Daniel wasn't the first to mention the mystery of the Christ. 
in types and shadows and pointing towards it. They saw something. And inspired by God under the Holy Ghost um, uh, unction, they wrote and prophesied and spoke and said, I can see it's like a glass, seeing through a glass darkly. Like, I, I can almost see it and then it fogs up again. They pointed to it. The reality came that night in Bethlehem. So, it is a wisdom that has been hidden, a wisdom which God planned for our glory before the world began. That's how this began, uh, how this ends, this 1 Corinthians. Now, here's just a little bit more. Not one of the rulers of this world has known it. Oh, this is one of my favorite verses. And it can't make Mr. Mr. Devil happy on any level. While I correct a spelling error here, sorry. I haven't spell checked it. Okay, so here's how that 1 Corinthians scriptures goes. It goes, not one of the rulers of this world knew it and has known it. They didn't, they didn't see it coming because if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The enemy thinking he had it. We've got them. The kingdoms of man are going to prevail. We killed him. He, you didn't kill him. I mean, you were the instrument of his death. But he, he came for this reason. He willingly laid down his life. If, if you talk about the right of self-defense, we believe these to be inalienable, which I believe is absolutely true in all of a nature. Well, I got news for you. Jesus, the perfection of God, the Son of God, the Christ, the, the magnificent King of Israel, this Christ, there is no way they could have taken him. None. I mean, even in Luke uh, towards the end of the book, when he's in the garden, right right when Judas brings the, the people in, it implies that there's like 600 to 1,000 troops that come with Judas. And they said, uh, who do you see? Jesus said. And they, they said, we seek Jesus. And Jesus said, I am. And, in, and I believe it is Luke or John. Yeah, it's one of those two, Luke or John. You can check it out. They, they fall down. 600 to 1,000 guys. Boom. Done. And, and then uh, he stands up again. He goes, I'm him. I am. I'm Christ. I'm who you're looking for. And he goes, these are not the disciples you're looking for. <laughs> That's where Star Wars got it from. These are not the droids you're looking for. He said it. He goes, hey, these guys are not who you're looking for. You let them go. All right, let's go on. The world, the darkness didn't see what was coming. They got blindsided. Boom. Somebody ought to make a movie about it. Oh, never mind. Uh, 1 Corinthians goes on, Paul. But as scripture says, no eye, no earthly eye has seen, no earthly ear has heard, and no earthly mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But wait, we don't have earthly eyes, earthly ears, or minds now that we are in Christ Jesus by faith. And this scripture goes on to say, but God has revealed those things to us by his spirit. All these things, God's thoughts, his minds, his ways, he is revealing. He's showing us in the scriptures. He's opening us up to see Christ in every point, every part of this book, this mystery stone that followed the children of Israel giving water in the desert, this mystery stone that probably Jacob laid his head on, this mystery stone that was everywhere and in everything. And now the rock Christ Jesus is the cornerstone. He is the foundation and the capstone. He is the everything, beginning and end, Alpha and Omega. I could preach. Here we go. Paul goes on, but the Spirit searches everything, especially the deep things of God. Now to me, kids, if you're in Christ Jesus, then you are in the mystery, hidden from the foundation of the world. You are in that mystery. The mystery was revealed especially beginning with Paul's gospel or Paul's uh, epistles and the, and the acts. Jesus hinted towards it because he was sent to the Jews to minister as a man of law under the law to bring it back to its perfect sense and tent, tense, the perfection of the law to show them there's nobody that can keep this. It, you have to have someone keep it for you. You have to come like a child and say, I got 
no idea how to be righteous before God. I got no idea how I can keep these laws. And he's going, good. Now you're ready for salvation. I'll do it. And so then Paul comes and begins to reveal and say, this is the mystery. Christ in us. Christ in us. Christ in us. He did it. It is by Christ in us that we are righteous by faith, by believing he did it for us. Okay, let's go on. Yet I digress if I don't. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the Spirit searches everything, especially the deep things of God. Jesus Christ is the mystery. He is the stone prophesied by Daniel, the eternal ruler, the one who will have the government completely upon his shoulders. You know what sits on the shoulders of the body of Christ? You know what sits on the shoulders of Jesus Christ? Do you know when it says the government shall be upon his shoulders? Does that mean it's the body of Christ that's going to be the government? No. What sits on the shoulders of the body of Christ? The head. Jesus is the government. Jesus. What sits on Daryl's shoulders? Daryl's head. What sits on your shoulders? There it is. He's the head. He's the governor. He's the ruler. He's the king. And he is our Lord. And the elite, the rulers, the smartest people in the room don't see it. They don't see it. So smile. Those of you whom God has opened your eyes and you have seen that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He is Lord, that He is risen, and that He did it all for you. And by faith in His deeds, His body, and His blood, and by faith in God's words that this is His Son who pleased Him, who is acceptable and perfect, we are saved. So look up. Your redemption is very, very near.